A lot of students are asking me how to study computer science in class 11 and 12. So I'm making this video so that it will be helpful for students to know exactly how they should study computer science in class 11 and 12. So the main question now is this computer science subject, what you're going to study is actually decided by your school in most cases. So you have two options to choose from. In class 11 and 12, you have two options to study, two subjects to study in computer science. You have two different options. The first one is either C++ or the second one is Python. And this is actually decided by your school. And sometimes they will give you option to choose, but in most cases, it's decided by the school. And 60% of the syllabus is covered in class 11 and 40% is covered in class 12. You have to understand that this subject which you're studying, computer science, is actually a continuous subject from class 11 to 12. So whatever you study in class 11, that will be continued to class 12 and 60% will be covered in class 11 and 40% in class 12. So in this video, I'll be explaining you both of these two options, either programming in Python or programming in C++. So you have two options, right? You can choose either of these two based on your own interest. But in most cases, this is decided by your school. Let me talk about the first option, which is programming in Python. So if you choose programming in Python in class 11 and 12, then you will have to study this one. So this is a book, right? This book is actually prescribed by the CBSE board, which is by Sumita Arora, okay? So computer science, Python, textbook for class 11. This is the textbook which you get. And this is by Sumata Arora, which contains all the important concepts, uh, for the basic concepts. Uh, and also you can download one app, right? Sipo app, you can download it. Now, this is actually containing all of these concepts, programming and computational thinking, computer systems and organization, data management, SQL, MongoDB, and society law and ethics. So you have to understand this is the basics of programming. You will learn all the basic concepts of Python in this book. Apart from this book, you will also get another book. This is the another next book, okay? So this book is the practical book for class 11 and this contains all the practical exercises which will be coding programming exercises will be given here so you will have uh, you have to fill all the spaces right so all these have to be filled it's like a workbook where you're going to write answers for all the questions so this is very important because this these two books are playing major role so these two books are what you will learn uh, in Python if you choose programming in Python, okay? These two, this is for theory and this is for practical. And similarly in class 12, you will be learning the concepts from this book. This is actually a continuation from class 11, okay? So you will be learning programming and computational thinking, computer networks, it's new and then data management, which is SQL, Django, and society law and ethics, which you previously learned. So these first and the last one you all already have learned uh, in class 11, and also some part of data management, but computer networks is entirely new. So this you will be learning only in class 12. So if you choose computer science with Python, then this is what the book by Sumita Arora is what it's prescribed, and you will also get the practical manual along with this. So these two are very, very important if you really want to learn the concepts of programming in Python. Let me give you some facts about the programming in Python. Python is very easy and easy to understand language because it's more close to human language like English. It's very close to high level language. So that's why it is high level language. Python is actually a high level language. Why? Because it's close to English or it, the, the programming which you do is actually close to the language English. So you will have the programming, uh, what you write, 
will have words which contain English words, right? So that's why you have to understand that Python is a high level programming language and it's very easy to learn the concepts of Python because it's easy to code in Python and easy to learn in Python because the code is easily readable. You don't have like apostrophes, you don't have a lot of syntactical constraints in Python. So it's very useful for you if you take Python as the subject. Python also has a very good real life examples because it's used in creating websites, it's used in creating games, applications, and also it's used in latest technologies like big data analytics, machine learning, deep learning, data science, artificial intelligence. All these make use of Python programming, so it's having a very good scope in the future and has a lot of job opportunities. So what you will learn in class 11 and 12 in Python is the object-oriented concepts of Python. You will start out with the basic concepts of OOP, OOPS, which is object-oriented programming, uh, like polymorphism, encapsulation, modularity, inheritance, eh, inheritance, data abstraction, and so on. These are concepts of polymorphism, and you will be writing real world code uh, in class 12. So you will doing, you'll be doing your Python project in which you will be using Python as well as data, which is SQL. So you manage data by using SQL, and you also have MongoDB, so which is actually a no SQL database. So you will be learning about databases and networking concepts, which are very, very useful if you are growing forward in this field of computer science. And also it has a lot of scope because it has a lot of variety of different applications in different fields, as I said before. So Python is really a good choice if you plan to study computer science in class 11 and 12, you have to choose Python because it's very user-friendly language. It's easy to learn, easy to program, and also easy to you know, get a job in the future. And one more thing I advise you to do is to program at least one hour every single day if you choose computer science because programming is like learning a new language. If you don't speak, if you don't actually practice a new language, what happens? You will not uh, be able to communicate with somebody else, right? Programming is communicating with the computer. If you want to learn programming, you have to learn it every single day. You have to do it, but you can only learn by doing. It's like driving a car or learning to cook. You have to learn only by doing. So you have to understand that you, ha you have to spend at least one hour every day it's all about logic, how you are able to think and arrive at uh, solve a problem because programmers are problem solvers. They pick a problem, they find out a solution, they devise the steps and they solve the problem. So it's very simple, but you must actually spend time at least one hour every single day so that you don't actually get lost with the subject. So you are keeping in touch with the subject and you are able to learn the subject. And also I request you to participate in an online programming contest. And uh, also I request you to not only participate in contests, but also participate in competitive programming. So competitive programming is all about competing with other people by solving a problem. And you're finding out the efficient solution. So every problem will have a solution. And computer science, the, the uh, you know, beauty about computer science is that we can find out a ton of solutions for one problem, but that solution, which is more efficient, is what is useful. So that's why if you can find out an efficient solution for a problem by practicing different questions, right, programming questions and programming contests, participating in programming contests, then that will really help you to boost your confidence in facing the CBSE board examination in computer science. The second option is programming with C++. So if you choose uh, programming in C++, then you have to learn C++. And C++ is actually an old language but actually, when you talk about C++ and Python, C++ is a little bit difficult. Why is it difficult? Because it's more close to the machine. You will not find words which are similar to Python, right? Python is more close to human language, but C++ is more close to machine. So you will find it more difficult. But if you learn the concepts of C++, Python will be very easy. But if you learn Python first, 
then you can learn C++ later, okay? But C++ has a variety of applications like making great games. Even, you know, the operating system is actually created by using C and C++. So C++ is actually C with classes. So C is also a programming language and some classes is added extra, so it is C++. And C++ can be used for creating games. It can be used in creating Android applications, native Android applications, and many other applications. So it has a variety of different applications, but C++ is, is one of the basic programming language which is used in competitive programming. So if you wanna get into competitive programming, then C++ is the best choice because it has a lot of different tools and it has many concepts in OOPS, which is object-oriented programming concepts like data abstraction, encapsulation, modularity, inheritance, polymorphism. So you have to learn these concepts in C++. And if you learn C++, then I can assure you that you will be able to learn any programming language because C++ is one of the hardest programming languages to learn. So if you want to master C++, then I request you to consider programming as a hobby, okay? You have to like, had developed interest in C programming or C++, you have a variety of different resources online. So if you go ahead and type online, you can find a bunch of resources for learning C++, but C++ is a little bit difficult to compare to Python, but if your school has chosen Python, then you are good to go because it's very simple. You can, you know, most people will be able to learn Python programming, complete Python entire 11th and 12th standard in three months. It's very simple, but C++ takes time for you to grasp the concepts because the concepts are not straightforward, right? You have to develop your own logic. You have to, different, prob different problems are solved in different ways. So you have to choose how you can solve the problem more, much more efficiently. And there can be multiple solutions for the same problem and you have to choose the most efficient solution. So that is what programming is all about. That's why I highly recommend you to practice. If you practice, you will have develop that confidence to solve any question because the questions, you have to first convert them into mathematical form. And after you convert the questions into mathematical form, you can apply your programming skills to solve the problem. Because you need mathematics if you wanna learn computer science, because mathematics is one of the concepts which is used in computer science programming, especially in programming. So you will uh, see questions which involves mathematics in a variety of programming contests. So that's why if you are really interested in programming, I request you to spend at least one hour every day in solving the particular question. And I also request you to not only stick to one programming language, but also explore yourself by learning multiple programming language. Even if you have chosen Python, you can always learn C++ by yourself, okay? And there is an, one app on Google Play Store uh, called Solo Learn. Solo Learn has basic programming concepts given for all programming languages. So you can learn the concepts by downloading this application, Solo Learn. But apart from that, I request you to practice on your own without referring to the solution. Because uh, in the textbook, you will have a lot of solved examples. But before you solve the example problems, you just have to think on your own, try to develop the logic and try to solve the question by yourself, this will really help you during the board examination. And let me tell you, in computer science subject, it's out of 100 marks in the CBSE board examination and 70 marks is for theory, okay? That is the writing the board exam. And remaining 30 marks is for practical. And this practical will involve you to actually implement any two of the programming uh, concepts which has been taught. So there will be a list of 10 experiments and out of these 10 experiments, two experiments will be asked. So I request you to practice programming because anyway, at the end of the day, if you want 30 marks in the practical exam, then you have to know programming. Then only you can implement by coding and show the result to your teacher. So I request you to practice programming. And also learn the concepts of Python from these two books, which is very, very useful for class 11 and class 12. If you wanna really master Python and you have to go, uh, because Python is very important, not only in your school, but after you graduate, after you go ahead and graduate high school, you will still be needing Python programming in your job. So if you are interested then learn these concepts of Python from this book, and also, I just want to inform you that I will also be making online courses. 
uh, for learning computer science in class 11 and 12 uh, in Python. So if you're really interested, then please subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can stay updated whenever I release the course, I will let you know. So I hope you got to know about the computer science, which is in class 11 and 12 and how to study computer science. So I wish you all the best practice programming and I hope that you will score good marks in the CBSE class 12 computer science board examination.